Good evening, everyone. You're watching Plain Speak with me, Shivani Gupta. A day like today that should have been a celebration of India's first tribal president and only second female president, Draupadi Murmu, has been marred with allegations of disrespect first and needless altercations. First, the Congress party today shot off a letter to Rajya Sabha speaker complaining that their LOP, the leader of opposition, Malika Arjun Kharge, was not given a spot during the president oath-taking commensurate with his position. As it turned out, in 2012, then LOP Arun Jaitley was seated in the exact spot during Pradam Mukherjee's swearing. Later, despite a previous warning, four Congress MPs continued to block proceedings with placards covering the speaker and in the well of the house and were eventually suspended. The Congress is upset with this call and we will debate this further in just a bit, whether the action has been fair or excessive. But first, I want to break down more of what happened. Now, remember the reason why this has come out as a little bit of a problem in opposition's behavior is that they were indeed warned against such behavior. They were told that placards are no longer going to be allowed. In fact, we are being told that opposition parties even met the speaker in his chamber earlier today. We are told they assured them of you know, not using any placards anymore in, on the floor of the house and especially not protesting in the well of the house. But when the session resumed, then Congress MPs were seen once again doing exactly the same. So you can see those placards that were caught. The chair was being sought to be blocked. And then clearly the uh, speaker has cracked the whip and has suspended four of Congress MPs for the entire remaining of the session. Now, poor behaviour, unruly protests, suspensions are not new, of course, in Indian Parliament. But I do want to break down specific instances when MPs were suspended just over the last one year, for example. Now, you go back exactly to a year, July 2021, TMC MP Shantanu Sen was suspended for snatching the papers out of the house, uh, out of the hands of a minister and then tearing them and, you know, throwing them in the direction of the well. Then in November 2021, 12 Rajya Sabha MPs were suspended for violent behaviour. You know, this is one of the images that were caught at that time, but there were very ugly visuals that came uh, to light. Marshals were violently attacked and all was caught on camera. A month later, December 2021, you would remember the TNC MP Derek O'Brien was suspended for throwing not just papers, but the entire rule book in the direction of the chair. And that could actually be dangerous to somebody's physical safety. Cut to July 2022, four more Congress MPs have now been suspended as they were protesting with these placards in the well of the house. They were seeking to cover the chair. Now, Parliament is meant for debate, but barring the budget sessions, all other sessions suffer from such protests, which don't even lead to any debate or answers eventually, only adjournments and loss of time and productivity. Just look at the current monsoon session, for example. The Lok Sabha productivity has been only 15%, while for Rajya Sabha, it is just 23%. This is the data till last week's Friday. But last year's winter session was only slightly better uh, at 77 with the upper house being at 43 but look at the monsoon session from last year it was as stormy as it gets and those were the instances i was pointing out as well with many flashpoints no wonder the productivity was down to as low as 21 percent for the lok sabha and 29 percent for the rajya sabha given that and given that we've always had rules against such protests in the well of the house with four congress mps now being suspended is this decision a fair one or as opposition would claim, especially the Congress party, excessive. First up, let's listen to what both sides are saying. As per the rules, we are giving adjournment motions. Today also I had given an adjournment motion, sixth day. But the government has shown complete arrogance towards the opposition parties. What do they do? They keep the speaker in front of the speaker. This is highly condemnable. And speaker warned. Speaker, आज बहुत स्पष्ट तरीके से warn किया अगर ऐसे ही आगे आप बढ़ते हैं तो मैं action लूँगा. We keep telling in the business advisory committee that give us a discussion under adjournment motion. What has been the response of the government? They have tried to avoid responsibility. They have tried to avoid discussion. And now, what they are trying to do? They are trying to intimidate us. आपका अधिकार है बोलने का. परंतु बोलने के लिए व्यवस्था है परंतु आप यदि हंगामा करते हैं तो अन्य जो मान्य सदस्य हैं उनके अधिकार का हनन भी करते हैं उनके अधिकार का रक्षण करना भी चेयर का जिम्मा है 
Going across to the guests who are joining us, Syed Zafar Islam of the BJP, National Spokesperson, Dr. Anshul Avijit from the Congress Party, Shantanu Guha Ray is Asia Editor, Central European News, Abhijit Majumdar, Consulting Editor, First Post, Nija Chaudhary, Senior Journalist, all joining us on the show and thank you for your time. Let me begin by Dr. Uh, with uh, Dr. Anshul Avijit. What's wrong if the speaker is setting some parameters, some line, a red line that MP should not cross? Because we have seen that this behavior certainly you know, doesn't write home about the opposition's behavior too. In this case, it may be the Congress party. But this is about setting benchmarks and setting a red line. Sure. I mean, but the guilty party is someone else and somebody else is the accused. I mean, that, that is the deep irony of this government. Apart from its uh, other dazzling achievements, this government has been consistent in throttling the voice of the opposition and therefore undermining all principles of parliamentary democracy, apart from the other dazzling achievements like wrecking the economy and the high levels of inflation and bringing in this kind of faulty GST in which, uh, you know, milk and all are uh, taxed. That is exactly what we wanted the discussion on. But there are provisions in the parliament, Shivani, which allow for this discussions. Just ask me a normal question, uh, just off the cuff, apart from this is that what is the most overriding question confronting this country at the moment? Leave aside everything else. Hmm. It has to be price rise. Okay. Leave aside the social issues that we have. So we wanted a discussion on price rise, on GST, on the fact that this government has completely botched up everything and the government will not allow it. You but know, is this the way to said, get yourself you know, this has heard? Been a pattern. Is this the way to get yourselves heard? Because let's say I'm not taking this instance in isolation. At the start of my show, I have outlined similar poor behavior being exhibited in the name of protest, including the fact that marshals were physically assaulted. And as I mentioned, that was caught on camera not so long ago. So what is the end result of this if it is not some sort of upmanship that we will not let you conduct your business if you don't listen to us? I will take your point about not getting your debates and discussions, but those debates have indeed happened. And the government has maintained if you allow the house to run, those debates will happen. Like this, nothing happens. You're letting the government off the hook. We have been consistently saying, you know, there's been a consistent attempt, uh, you know, an unflinching attempt by this government to, you know, scuttle the voice of the opposition. I mean, you just have to look at another, which is a dazzling statistic, which has entered folklore, is the number of bills which have actually gone to a standing committee. You know, the Prime Minister at the beginning of this session very graciously and very generously said that we want to analysis, visualization, we want analysis, a detailed analysis. How do you want it unless you don't send it to a standing committee? You know, the, the government exhausts itself in the rhetoric. So it can do precisely the opposite in its actionable life in Yeah, the but parliament. that's a slightly this different issue, pattern. Anshul, that I'm discussing. My question is, for example, take the instance of the so-called Pegasus issue and there were other issues that also came to fore. Now, when the minister was actually responding to it, what happened? An opposition M uh, MP, you know, snatched the papers out of his hands and tore them. Then what let does the opposition have to stand on that you actually want a discussion and debate and you want answers from the government? In the Rajya Sabha, if you're referring to 267, we've repeatedly sent uh, that we want a discussion under 267. It can be done under the rules of the House and repeatedly from 2016, I will quote you n number of instances when we wanted a discussion on GST, on Pegasus, on Raphael, on increasing price lies, and this has been denied by the government. But Similar, all those discussions the have indeed rule, happened. Is in the, Lok Sabha. the opposition is insisting you do it when we ask for, not even wait for a day or two. But I take your point to Zafar Islam of the BJP who is with us. Uh, respond to this, uh, Mr. Zafar, because, you know, the opposition repeatedly says it's not just the Congress party, but several other opposition parties say you don't, you know, you don't run the house the way it is supposed to be for what it is supposed to be, which is that the opposition should get its fair chance. <clears throat> it is a belated lie. First of all, every discussion is possible. And that indication has been given by the Parliamentary Affairs Minister, by the, none other than the, the Prime Minister himself, has indicated that we want to discuss every single issue what the opposition wants to discuss. Whatever you want to discuss, that adv advisory, business advisory committee, hmm. they can dis uh, it can be decided there. You have a process to follow. But what they do, they do not discuss, they, or whatever they get, uh, being discussed, they agree there. 
but when they come to the parliament their only intention is to disrupt the parliament and no business should should be transacted because if they are not able to let the parliament run then they go outside and 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 uh, just see the uh, tweet of uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, congress leader jairam ramesh hmm. every day is claiming that we have not allowed the parliament to function what does that mean mean what is their intention their intention is that no discussion should take place no debate should take place their intention is only to disrupt the parliament uh, uh, they should be seen on the television that here they are disrupting the parliament criticizing the government outside the parliament they are discussing in the business advisory committee that yes these are the issues we will discuss on the floor of the parliament mm. we want to debate on this uh, these issues but when they come inside their approach is very different and rightfully four of their mps have been uh, suspended and those who do not want the, the parliament to run mm. and disrupting the parliament they should meet out the same fate because okay. it is very unfair on the part of uh, opposition leaders and they must understand that it is tax payers money and unless business is transacted unless the bill which has been which needs to be debated and passed by the mm. parliament who will suffer the people of this great country no all of that is fine suffer. but the opposition would also get the chance to get it you're right obviously this is a legislature house and its I primary have, business I, is to I pass might, bills might, but this is also the temple of democracy where I, you I, need healthy debate i i myself have been a parliament hmm. tripterian i had seen the approach how some of the senior leaders of congress party and other opposition leaders they push their junior junior colleague to go towards the well and show placard show and and make slogans all these things are being done knowingly purposely deliberately to ensure that parliament is not right okay I will give I will answer an opportunity Otherwise, to respond to that but have, I just want to step away from our political guest for just one minute you know I want to elevate this debate into how indian parliament should be just how long uh, after 75 years of independence can we have these scenes play out inside you know our central government parliament shantanu guhari i'm coming to you you know whether the opposition grows is fair or not and all oppositions through you know the last few decades have had the similar issues that they are not being heard is storming the well of the house correct and should that be barred should a precedent be set that no this is no longer going to be acceptable this is not acceptable as per rules but there was just too much leniency allowed and now that red line is being reasserted do you think that's the right way to go because ultimately there has to be uh, for lack of another word a maryada under which our mps behave you know the most important point which needs to be debated which is not been debated is what the mps are doing the mps are teaching no non cooperation here and important legislations have been passed without any discussion they need to remember that the question hour is the most important function of parliament important issues get highlighted unfortunately this has been bypassed now obviously the government will be very happy if disruptions happen don't forget it is arun jetli who once said the opposition is in the business of disruption mm -hmm. so we will disrupt and now they are facing the same music and now the government is probably happy that these kind of disruptions are happening it makes the passage of bills possible by voice vote what i what i feel very sad about that we need to follow and with our our model is based on the westminster model mm. why don't we re remember that there in england there is a time when the prime minister has to address certain issues in on thursday which is called the question hour hmm. and for half an hour is there answering questions leveled against him by the opposition mm -hmm. i think healthy debate can happen if there is some sanity the opposition needs to remember that if they need to push their debates forward hmm. they need to be a little calm and only then things can work otherwise these kind of disruptions will continue to happen and i must honestly say here it will make the government very happy because yeah, exactly. these You're kind right. of disruptions uh, doesn't make i wanted make to ask anshul avijit exactly that because it, these disruptions and eventual suspensions don't help the opposition's agenda you are not able to put the government on the mat the government gets an ec passage and they can always come out of the house and say well we weren't allowed to debate 
you're under a huge misconception, Shivani, if you think that if, dis uh, if there were no disruptions, if we didn't get our way, if there were absolutely smooth run running of the parliament, then the this government will allow for discussion. This never happened no, in the past. No, but Abhijit, that's you not, the Anshul, other that's not you fair. You see the other bills. No, no, Anshul, that's no, no, not you, fair. Just have a look at the I other bills. I don't have to assume that. Have we have seen healthy debate discussion. happen. There was and no we have seen opposition leaders make their mark. But there has to be some decorum maintained for the situation to come to that. You cannot say that, that because you fear that the government will still not allow you. That's why we will not let things run. That's not an excuse. This is not a fear of what is about to happen. This is about experience of what has happened in the past. This government doesn't believe in opposition. Do you not know how the way it runs its country? Every single decision is unilateral, beginning from demo to any other situation which has completely wrecked this economy and created huge, huge social tensions. That's what you want to discuss about. You know, there is no... Oh, uh, this is a huge misconception. But, but, but you know, that's besides the point. That doesn't resolve what's happening happening right now. Yes. Right now, we want a discussion on the most pressing issue in this country, which is inflation. Okay. And if the government doesn't want it, well, it's guilty of causing it. Yeah, Zafar Aslam, the government doesn't want it. That's why all of this is happening. You've basically forced the hand of the Congress MPs. I, I think, I think uh, he must, uh, the Congress spokesperson must listen to our parliamentary affairs minister. Very candidly, and where in plain words he said, we want to have all kind of discussion which opposition wants. All we want that you should not disrupt the parliament. Let's discuss in the business advisory committee. Uh, Mr. Zafar Islam, I listened to the Prime on, Minister on himself. I have every single I've... word of his speech written before the starting no, of the so session. No, so why don't you discuss? Hame Tell your... Uh, Hame, please, uh, don't Hame interrupt me. No, Hame please don't interrupt me. I remember every single word. All I'm saying word. that you... You ask your, you are, you instead of, is, instead of asking your colleague, junior colleague or your the, uh, the other parliamentarian to go to the wall and, and uh, start. Uh, no, they're not going uh, on our behest, Mr. Zafar Islam. Instead, you, Come you on. Discuss, you ask them they're to discuss like in the, in the business who are advisory to the, committee and, to the and agree on these issues. We want to discuss, all I'm telling you, we want to discuss all, uh, whether inflation, we have discussed many times inflation, we have discussed every issues. We, we can well, I'm glad you're saying this. I think you please convey that to, to the, the uh, House. You discuss it and agree on it. How much time you want to allocate? The, see, they do no, not we, want we've to already said, in even, even in the Rajya Sabha and they the Lok Sabha, we have given Rule notices. Rule 67, this notice. Rule for X, this notice. And it's best to discuss in the Business Advisory Committee, whatever you want to discuss. Agree on it. And let's have a discussion on that. You know, the larger whether point that I'm discussing, gentlemen, I just want to, I just want to pull away from this. Discuss. Because, you know, the political bickering is, has stayed the same over many years. Neeta Chaudhary, the larger question here no, also is of how... I, I'll come back to you. Zafar truth. Islam, I'll come back to you. They do not Neeta want Chaudhary, the larger the question also here is of how Indian Parliament should function. Do you believe it is indeed the Speaker's responsibility to ensure that ugly scenes don't transpire. It seems that MPs just don't seem to care anymore of the example that they're setting. And ultimately, the rules have to be enforced. Look, uh, today's instance has two sides to it. Yes, I would say definitely it's the Speaker's uh, responsibility to make sure that the House functions properly, people get a chance to speak, laws are passed, discussions take place, the government is held to account, all that, yes. And uh, uh, particularly when he said, after 3 p.m., I will try and adjust what you want, if I have, mm. have got it right. Mm. Now, if he's made that promise to come back with the placards, it does not make sense. Now, but I would say it's not so simple a business today. Mm. Because what has happened today has come in the context of the advisory that was passed mm -hmm. by Parliament that you will not, MPs will not be allowed to protest, have a dharna, hold placards, etc., etc., and they had increased the number of unparliamentary words that the MPs could not use. Mm. Now, this is a new context. You know, in, in the past, they have been uh, they had been requested, please don't do it. This time, it is a much more categorical uh, warning that was given. Now, I I say to myself, you know, with a weakening opposition all over the country. If in Parliament also, you are not allowed to use words like corrupt, which you must be using uh, 10 times a day in Parliament. Hmm. You know, so-and-so is corrupt. Or Tana Shahi. 
you know, uh, uh, today you could use the word Tana Shahi, you are, uh, give me the freedom to have my say. Hmm. Uh, then what, what worth is freedom of speech? What worth is the right to assemble? If parliamentarians who represent you and me are not allowed that right inside parliament, that is very, very problematic to me. Okay. So I think, I think uh, the speaker, I wish, you know, there is a tough deficit in this parliament. Uh, you, you, you know, the role of the opposition, you don't have a respect for. I remember Pramod Mahajan of the BJP when he used to be parliamentary affairs minister. And you remember when 2G uh, scam was being discussed, whole session was wiped out. And then after days and days of disruption, he would come sit down with the uh, opposition MP. Ab batao. Aapne kya liya na jo kehna tha, ab batao chahiye kya hai, house mein wapis kaise aana hai. Right. So this reach out. I think this should take place. I hope the speaker will take the initiative. The larger question of addressing the uh, trust deficit between the two sides. And to take, I take the Prime Minister's word very, very seriously. When he says, hame alochna chahiye, hame sambad chahiye, hmm. how do we facilitate that? Because without that, Parliament is just a formality. Okay. The I take of your point about good. debate and discussion and even criticism and harshest criticism possible should be allowed inside Parliament. Parliament because as you very rightly say, Nija Chaudhary, if it's not done in Parliament, where will it happen? It cannot just be outside. It has to be on the floor of the House too. But on the question of barring some words or the manner in which these protests should happen, I take that to Abhijit Majumdar as well. Abhijit, can it be whatever way suits the opposition of the day or do some red lines need to be put and enforced? That's essentially what's happening. That it's not just about protest, it's about the manner in which you do it. For example, why do you need to have placards and block the speaker or the chair if you have a point to make? I'll tell you, Shivani, why uh, the opposition needs placards and this kind of absolutely, uh, you know, uh, uh, vociferous uh, uh, protests. And because the opposition has comprehensively lost the battle for parliament it also somewhere knows that it, it may not recover that ground in the near future. So what the opposition has done, we have seen, is that they have taken the battle to the street. So they want the parliament to come to the street and the street to come to the parliament. You know, that, is, that has been the, the strategy that they have adopted. We have seen the articulation of that strategy by people like Harsh Mandar, who were, who were there in the NSC, Sonia Gandhi's uh, NSC, the whole uh, government governance by, uh, by, by NGOs, uh, uh, Harsh Mandar was there. And mm. during the anti-CA protest, Harsh Mandar said that, you know, this is where on the streets that the, you know, how the nation is run will be decided. People like Yogendra Yadav have gone on record saying that elections are not the uh, you know, uh, not not the last thing about uh, democracy. Yes. So in that light, let us, and also let us get to cold figures. In the first two decades of parliament, Lok Sabha met for an average of little more than 120 days a year. In the last decade, it has come down to 70 days a year. In 2017, the figure uh, that I have, Parliament met for only 48 days. Last monsoon session, 2021, over 74 hours were lost mm -hmm. because of disruptions in the Lok Sabha, 76 hours because of disruptions in the Rajya Sabha. The total time lost, you know, was... So the parliament could actually function, Lok Sabha could function only 22% of the time. Yes, I showed that And Rajya Sabha 28%. Hmm. So the 50 odd days that they now meet, from that it has come down to, you know, uh, of that, if only 20, 25% of the days are utilized, hmm. then, you know, why are we spending, uh, uh, you know, 50,000 crore, 60,000 crore, for each general election to conduct a general election and uh, you know and and elect our uh, uh, representatives to do what to do placards that they can do on the streets and if they want to do what they want to do on the streets 
then they you know they should be disqualified as mps then why I bother the with parliament has... yes and parliament has its own procedure it has ah, its so own privileges uh, it I also has it its own it been, it uh, red lines can i rebut that yeah but anshul the question that everybody is raising is that you know this is some sort of competitiveness that you know you did this to us at one time and mm. you are seeking to recreate that uh, uh, against the modi government but why you know just get embroiled in that because you can also get more out of these uh, debates from parliament if you just pressed in the right manner you know my honorable friend has mentioned you statistics but he hasn't told you the number of uh, you know bills which have been sent to a standing committee you're talking about tit for tat absolutely not the number of bills sent to the standing committee in the 14th and 15th lok sabha was 60 and 71 that has taken a precipitous decline from 28 to 12 percent talk about emulating you know what they did and what we didn't do i wish they emulated our example you know they haven't you know my friend hasn't given uh, an example of the number of short duration notices that were accepted or you know notices that were accepted under rule 267 in the rajya sabha has he given all this you know the number of times this has been rejected our talk calls for discussion on imp matters of urgent national importance has been rejected should also be in this list of statistics. Yes, you you're know, right, the, therefore, Anshul. Yeah. As I myself said, of course, this has to happen in parliament. It's not just about passing it. bills. The but there has to be a behavioral statistics. code. You Nobody cannot act it. like the way you would on a sit-in on the streets. Then what's the point of having the parliament? Shivani, you rightly pointed out that it is the duty of the government, the incumbent government, to ensure that the House runs. Yes, but they it is also, sure, I feel, know, incumbent on the Speaker. When, I, when Anshul, as ordinary citizens, when we watch this play out, I feel most individuals will feel that why are these MPs not acted against? That's the frustration the common public has. Because we don't want to the see this. The frustration of the... And Shibani, I think it is incumbent of the on the common Speaker public or the is, Chair why isn't to price set a red right line. Discussed? Okay. Why is it yes. what I'll just, irks us the most is price rise? Why is that not being discussed? That would affect the common public. Sure That's enough. That's not being allowed that, to be discussed. Sure enough. Discussed. Yes, Abhijit, very quickly, 10 seconds. No, I'm saying that nobody has said that it's not going to be discussed. In fact, categorically, Mr. Om Birla said today when? that we are, no, 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 uh, you know, empty uh, words. Uh, these are empty words. Empty words. This is pure it rhetoric. It cannot be done. That's it what I'm trying to tell you. You don't need anything. It's not going to follow through. You your way through. You cannot sort of, you know, just, just because uh, you don't have the numbers, you sort of uh, create an excuse. Oh, come on. Uh, you it's not about numbers. It's with, about uh, the respect and the position of the Abhi, opposition, Abhi, the parliamentary Abhi, system, Abhi, yeah. which has been consistent behind the mind. It's not that, about numbers. Even if there was one member of the opposition, we can't be disregarded. He or she. Okay, uh, Mr. Zafar Islam, I'll give you a final 30 seconds. Every time we discuss this, every time we ask the same question to the government and to the BJP, something has to give. You have to figure out a way. Mrs. Okay, I think we've lost that line with Zafar Islam. Yes, Shantanu uh, Guha, yeah. can I give you the last 30 seconds? Okay. You know, Shivani, what really bothers me is hmm. debates, discussions, dissent is a way of life. Mm -hmm. And that must exist in any democracy. Whether we say the opposition doesn't have the numbers and they are weak and they can't even raise certain issues. So that's why they have to barge into the well of the house and all of that. But what it is doing is it's percolating down to the states. If you take a look at the assemblies, mm -hmm. the various state assemblies routinely face the same situation what parliament is facing. Mm. Take yeah. individual look at the state. These kind of disruptions have now become norm. People are not discussing, debating. They are just disrupting. That, in my opinion, is a matter of serious concern. Yes. And I think, in my opinion, I personally believe it is the government's responsibility to engage the opposition. Okay. We've seen also that happen on many occasions. Debate. Even today, we are being told the speaker did hold a discussion. He was given certain promises, but they were not kept. But, but of course, there's a lot of bickering that continues to happen. And the speaker needs to make an extra effort.
Okay. That's all. Extra effort from it's the part of like the speaker yeah. and the government, the tre treasury benches. I leave it at that. I do thank all of you for joining us. I have to shift my attention to the other big story that we're tracking and what could become very explosive in days to come. Now, the face-off between former Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre and current Chief Minister Eknath Shinde is getting uglier. This after Uddhav took a below-the-belt jive at the current CM and his supporters, saying that Shinde and his supporters are not mud. That is, colloquially, translating to being impotent. Uddhav made this comment in the teaser of an interview that he has given to Shiv Sena leader Sanjay Raut for party uh, mouthpiece Samna. In the same interview, Uddhav has alleged that Shinde camp backstabbed him and betrayed his trust. Meanwhile, after this clip surfaced, the Shinde camp also launched a counter-offensive with MLA Abdul Sattar saying that Uddhav should introspect on why the rebellion within the party took place in the first place and that it was Ajit Pawar who was running the Aghadi government to, for two and a half years. Now remember, all of this is also happening as there's a larger battle ongoing, a legal one between the Uddhav and Sena camp for the future of the party itself. Now the Shinde camp had moved the Supreme Court, uh, rather the Uddhav camp has moved the Supreme Court yet again, where uh, Eknath Shinde has staked claim to the Shiv Sena symbol, but Uddhav team has sought a stay on those symbol proceedings. Still, a decision is taken on disqualifying of the MLAs who had revolted against him. Remember, the Supreme Court is also to decide on the plea by Shinde camp that has challenged the decision of the previous Deputy Speaker to disqualify the quote-unquote rebel MLAs, while Uddhav's plea is that those challenges, Governor's decision to invite Shinde to be Maharashtra CM should also be decided upon. All of it will eventually have a bearing on just who controls the party and the all-important symbol. Before we go to our guests, let's also listen in to what both sides have said over this fresh attack. किस हिसाब से है किसके लिए है ये अगर सब जाने उन्होंने तो कई ढाई साल से मुझे लगता है 26 महीने तो सीएम साहब की कुर्सी पे ही वो बैठे नहीं अजीत दादा रोज सवेरे 7 बजे मंत्रालय खोलना वहां से काम का शुरू करना सो दिस मर्द अटैक वी विल ऑब्वियसली नॉट जस्ट लुक एट व्हाट दिस मींस द words of course and the import of those words that the former chief minister is using what the current rebel camp is saying but also is this not an uncalled for jive is this really necessary is this what political lexicon should be anymore in 2022 that too from a former chief minister Rupesh Patil, who is a Sena youth leader and supports the Shinde camp is joining us Rajpoon Shiv Sena leader Formerly with the Uddhav Thakre and family, Chandrasekhar Nene, political analyst, all joining us on the show. Raj Punch, let me begin with you. What is the need to draw this Mard Na Mard uh, analogy or parallel? What does that even mean? I mean, do we have to speak in those terms? Ki ye Mard nahi hai, ye Na Mard hai. Ye kis tara ki bhasha hai? Okay, ab, is prakar se jo bhi बोल रहे हैं ये उनके अपने विचार होंगे निजी विचार होंगे इसमें यही कह सकते हैं कि अपने हिसाब से जो वो बोल रहे अदरवाइज इस प्रकार का शब्द वैसे नॉर्मली कभी यूज नहीं होता लेकिन फिर भी कभी किसी भी कारण से इस प्रकार का कोई ना कोई वर्ड निकल जाता है माउथ से इट्स अ मे बी ऐसा ही हो सकता है और तो कोई ज्यादा इसमें नहीं है बिकॉज चाहिए कभी भी बिकॉज पार्लियामेंट ने भी अभी काफी वर्ड्स के ऊपर भी वो करा है लेकिन इस प्रकार के अगर कोई वर्ड आया है तो डेफिनेटली इस प्रकार से नहीं होना चाहिए था लेकिन हुआ है तो इसमें उनका हो सकता है कि इस प्रकार से दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ इंटरव्यू इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ डिबेट कभी भी ऐसा हो सकता है यस एंड आई एम अज्यूमिंग इट्स नॉट अ कोइंसिडेंस दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर क्लिप हैज बीन चोजन as a teaser for that interview it has been obviously chosen for a reason because it will have exactly this impact but the reason i'm objecting to this word or this kind of you know allegation uh, and uh, objection is because what is the insinuation here mr nene the insinuation is that you know mar the male masculine they are supposed to be <laughs> strong they are supposed to be able to take you on and then what is the fallout of the such narrative that what women are not supposed to be strong enough i mean i'm not wanting to deliberately influence feminism into this debate but it sounds really passe it sounds you know a kind of lexicon that certainly a former chief minister should not use 
because it has wide implications. Uh, actually, if you see, this is exactly the DNA of Shiv Sena, erstwhile Shiv Sena. They have been always known to use this kind of languages. This is a milder version of the languages they normally use. Hmm. So we should be thankful to them for that. And as far as the male dominance is concerned, I think there is a clue to be drawn from this that they really want to show that they are the best and the opposition camp is of no use. Male or female is not really the point here. But the kind of words and languages they are using for their former colleagues, mm -hmm. remember, the time Uddhav Thakre has been in Shiv Sena active is much less than what Eknath Shinde has been. Hmm. And many of his followers have been in Shiv Sena for a far longer time than what, uh, forget Aditya Thakre, Aditya Thakre's total age is less than what Eknath Shinde has spent in Shiv Sena working mm -hmm. hard. So uh, whatever these people are doing, they are harming their own cause. In fact, they are trying to appeal to the Shiv Sena voters mm -hmm. because they were used to this language. But I'm quite sure that the Shiv Sena supporters are also wiser now. And I don't think they are going to fall for this kind of language. In fact, they are exposing themselves by doing this. It would be much wiser to talk very sensibly to the people who have left them and to lure them back in. Instead of that, they are actually pushing people out of the Sena. Yeah, and Looking I'm not sure what does that even mean, ki ye mad nahi hai. <laughs> What does it mean? It means that they are murdered. I mean, the people who are saying they are the murdered means they have the power and these people are simply nincompooks and yeah. basically because these people are with BJP, they are not Shiv Sena. Yeah, and because, because his claim is that they didn't face it head on, so they didn't meet him no. or face him head on, therefore these are they are not murdered. I mean, this whole, yeah. whole <laughs> ja type of talk and uh, analogies, frankly, the time is up for this. Uh, in, in 2022, I'm not sure if we should be talking like this because, you know, these gender uh, stereotypes, we want to break them, not reinforce them. But Rupesh Patil is with us. Rupesh Patil, you are a youth leader, but you support Shinde Ji. I want to ask you, this is the teaser that you have in the interview of Uddhav Thakre. आप कैसे देखते हैं क्योंकि संजय राउत उनसे कुछ सवाल पूछ रहे हैं और एकदम से उद्धव ठाकरे बोलते हैं कि वो मर्द नहीं है <laughs> अभी कैसा है कि जो महाराष्ट्र में अभी जो राजनीति का दौर चल रहा है इसमें जब ऐसे होता है जब ये ऐसे तरीके के जो सेंटेंस निकल जाते हैं जब अपने हाथ में कुछ नहीं रहता है और वही गड़बड़ी में ये सेंटेंस मुझे लग रहा है कि अभी ये लास्ट वाला ऐसा है कि अभी इनको ये नहीं बोलेंगे तो और कैसे बोलेंगे क्योंकि लोग जा रहे हैं हमारा समर्थन बढ़ रहा है और इस समर्थन के रूप में अगर उनके पास में अगर ये राहुल है या फिर एक दो लोग हैं तो वो वही भाषा का यूज करेंगे जिससे हमें उम्मीद थी क्योंकि अभी वही मैंने बोला कि लास्ट मोमेंट में वो और इससे ज्यादा बढ़ा सकते हैं और शायद यही लैंग्वेज उनसे आ सकते हैं लेकिन हम लोग काम में फोकस कर रहे हैं आज आपने देखा कि हमने यूथ सेना का इनोग्रेशन किया है सम्मानीय सीएम साहब के आपके कहने पे अभी तो युवा सेना के हमारे सारे जो टीम है जिस स्टेटस ये हम अब जो हमारे साथ अभी काम चालू करेंगे और हम लोग पैन मारास का ही काम चालू चालू करेंगे और इससे शायद मुझे ऐसा लग रहा है कि ये ये सेम लैंग्वेज अभी के साथ भी शायद बोल सकते हैं Achha. No, so uh, Raj Poonj, before I bring in Rajiv Pandey of the BJP who's also joining us, although his video is not very good, but uh, Raj Poonj, is this a sign of desperation, as uh, Mr. Patel is saying? That now everything is gone from the hand. So that's why in desperation, in every big deal, these words are coming out. Look, desperation is not the case. It can be done with these words in this way. कि आप सामने से आपने अगर वार करना था इस प्रकार से आपने अलग होना था या इस प्रकार से आपने अपने आप को कहीं नॉमिनेट करके कहीं ले जाके जाना था तो कम से कम फ्रंट पे आके बात करते जिस तरह से आपको इनवाइट किया गया था अब बैक पीछे से आके अगर आप उसको खंजर घूम रहे हैं तो ये इस वजह से इस शब्दों का प्रयोग किया हुआ होगा कि आप कम से कम फ्रंट पे आके इस प्रकार से मुकाबला करते आप बैक तो इस तरह से जहां तक मैं समझ पाया हूं इन शब्दों को लेकिन इसमें कोई ऐसा नहीं है डेसिप्रेशन डेस्प्रेशन और इस प्रकार का कुछ भी नहीं है डोंट टेक इट अदरवाइज इस तरह से ऐसा इसमें कुछ नहीं है लेकिन हाँ देखिए अब जिस तरह से करा हमारे ही तो शिवसैनिक थे कई बार से तो आए नहीं थे बीजेपी को नहीं है, है तो शिवसेना से तो शिवसेना से अगर आप हैं तो शिव एक ही पार्टी से जो छप्पन साल से संगठन है हिंदुत्व की बात कर रहा है और लगातार करता चला आ रहा है उसके ऊपर आप आके इस प्रकार से बात करेंगे तो इसवाइल 
मतलब आपके ऊपर वो है कि आप ऐसा क्यों करा इसके पीछे रीजन क्या था रीजन जब बताने के लिए आपको बोला तो भी आप रीजन बताने को तैयार नहीं है देख बट जो शिंदे कैंप है उनके लीडर्स तो कहते हैं हमने बार बार बोला हमने तो बहुत मिलने की कोशिश करी बाद में क्यों बोल रहे थे उद्धव ठाकरे की आके मिले वो तो हमेशा से ही कह रहे थे कि हम तो कोशिश करते थे हमें तो साइड में कर दिया बट एनीवेज वो वो बातचीत अब हो चुकी है आई डोंट वांट टू गो इट बोथ साइड्स हैव गिवन रीजंस उद्धव ठाकरे हैज सेड दैट दे हैव बैकस्टैप मी शिंदे कैंप हैज आल्सो सेड दैट यू शुड लुक विद इन राजीव पांडे आई वांट टू कम टू यू does this look like a sign of desperation because you know legally speaking as the days are progressing nothing seems to be moving back to the takres the entire game is continuing to slip from in their hands i completely agree with you the issue is legislature party in the uh, vidhan sabha as well as in lok sabha shiv sena uh, is now with uh, eknath shinde ji and uh, and their group the larger issue is the way things are going on for arswail shiv sena or shiv sena led by uddhav ji you know whole thane has gone konkan is gone navi mumbai kalyan dombi wali is almost gone mumbai mlas mp have gone the issue is about the sakha pramukh and all this language is going to hurt more to uddhav ji than eknath shinde ji the reason is clearly eknath shinde ji has stated and all other leaders that this mba government the earlier mba government was being run by ncp hmm. and they were looting their two ministers are in jail and every shiv sainik was pained by this that how under uddhav thakre's uh, cm ship this ncp was looting whole maharashtra two has gone to jail two now one sanjay pande commissioner of police is in jail another commissioner of police was absconding so that was the situation of the governance in maharashtra maharashtra is you know the top state who is a growth engine for for india and the way things were happening no shiv sena uh, uh, cadre liked it okay. and last point the hindu is hindutva bala saheb thakre used to say param puja bala saheb thakre used to say hindutva is our sauce it's my breath what happened to that you are going to the people you are going joining hands with congress and ncp and indirectly you are supporting uh, that uh, that uh, uh, asaduddin owaisi okay no shiv sainik will like it no we'll have to we'll like, have to wait and see as i said all of these allegations or attacks that have been made on the shinde camp uh, they haven't quite stuck one is that they also haven't really lost any ground since the rebellion since you know bringing the government down and forming their own government but ultimately we'll have to see this is going to be a long drawn battle uh, chandrashekhar nena i want to give you the last word you know i don't claim to be woke but uh, if i was then i think the term is toxic masculinity isn't it terms like mard na mard they fall under that category if there was i feel if it was any other leader possibly this comment would have not gone down too well with the vokes of the country but for some reason uddhav thakre gets a pass but does this analogy this kind of a jibe against what are shiv sainiks and long time shiv sainiks ultimately going to hurt the thakres themselves do you believe that what rajiv pandey is saying if what is happening is as the sanskrit saying says vinasha kale viparita buddhi in their desperation they are falling back to old tactics of doing verbal attacks and they have completely lost their sense of balance this is going to alienate half their voters who are women voters what will they make of it are they going to make of it as a something which is just a talk or they are thinking that shiv sena leaders the current shiv sena leaders are still in the same mold of 18th century male uh, supremacy yes, male dominance right. i think this is very reprehensible and this should be many more people should come out and more women should come out against this statement he has to retract this statement that will at least save some grace but abhi interview to aaya hi nahi hai chandrashekhar ne ne interview hasn't even come and already uh, you're talking of retractions ab ab actually pehle hi retraction kare to ye zyada behtar hoga isn't it <laughs> okay that would be possibly a good thing to do because mr rajpunj you are also not seeming very comfortable with this kind of a language It, if it is a slip of tongue you don't believe in this kind of stereotyping oh you can always take it back in mai mai jahan tak samjha hu ek ho sakta hai dusra bhi hai unke prati jo matlab hota hi hai jab parivar ka koi sadasya chhod ke chala jata hai to definitely is prakar ka 
शब्द हम कहीं ना कहीं प्रयोग कर सकते हैं और कर लेते हैं उनके लिए क्योंकि उन पर इतना विश्वास होता है और उनके साथ चले इतने साथ और ऐसा तो है नहीं कि वो कुछ नए थे या ऐसा थे और इतने पुराने थे हमारे साथ कंधे से कंधा मिला के मृत्यु की बात करते थे और आज वो छोड़ के चले गए तो ऑब्वियस है कहीं ना कहीं इसका सेटबैक तो होगा ही कहीं ना कहीं नहीं गुस्सा तो है एंड आई डोंट डिनाई हिम द राइट टू हैव अ ग्रज बट शुड यू टेक इन टू दिस दिस काइंड ऑफ अ डिस्कोर्स दिस मर्द नामर्द नपुंसक एंड ऑल ऑफ दिस ये ये जो सारा जो मर्द का बच्चा एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट ये जो कमेंट्स होते हैं इसकी क्या जरूरत है एंड दिस इज नॉट एन ऑर्डिनरी लीडर स्पीकिंग दिस इज अ फॉर्मर चीफ मिनिस्टर स्टिल मिस्टर पाटिल आपको मैं फाइनल 30 सेकंड्स देती हूं अगर आपको ये मर्द जाइब को रिस्पॉन्ड करना है तो आप कैसे रिस्पॉन्ड करेंगे क्योंकि ये शिंदे जी के खिलाफ और आप सबके खिलाफ है नहीं मैं वही सोच रहा हूँ कि अभी मैंने जैसे बोला कि ये हड़बड़ी में यही सब लैंग्वेज यूज करते हैं और इसको शिवसेना हमारे जो लीडर्स हैं वो शिवसेना हमारे ऐसे ही है तो इससे मैं तो सोच रहा हूँ कि इससे पूरी शिवसेना खराब हो रही है हमारे जैसे पढ़े लिखे जो है वो इस तरीके की लैंग्वेज अभी हम तो सात को सुसंस्कृत और ये समझते हैं और वो है पर ये किन लोगों की जबानी है वो उनकी जबान से डाल रहे हैं मुझे पता नहीं है मैं तो छोटा हूँ इस चीज में बात करने के लेकिन जैसे ये सब चीजें हम लोग बाहर नहीं यूज कर सकते जैसे मैंने मुझे किसने बोला कि मैं सुसंस्कृत हूँ तो मेरी हर एक सेंटेंस मेरी लैंग्वेज एक उस लेवल की रहेगी अगर मुझे मेरे भाई ने भी दगा दिया जब ये किया तो मैंने मैं मुझे मुझे पता है कि मुझे किस लेवल की लैंग्वेज में मुझे यूज करनी है okay. तो अब मुझे वो संस्कार है तो मैं ये नहीं बोल रहा हूँ कि उधर जी वो बोल रहे हैं मैं बोल रहा हूँ कि ये कोई तो है जो जिनको जिनमें साहब की तकलीफ है और वो उधर जी साहब के मुंह में ये लैंग्वेज डाल रहे हैं और okay. ये क्यों से ना एक्सेप्टेड नहीं वेल डिफिकल्ट टाइम्स कैन डेफिनेटली ब्रिंग इन सम स्लिप्स एज मिस्टर नैने सेड देर इज अ संस्कृत कपलिंग दैट टॉक्स अबाउट बैड टाइम्स you know switching your mind and you do even worse that makes it worse for you i leave it at that gentlemen thanks a lot for joining us we'll see uh, what exactly this interview manages to do once it comes out in full are there some more such surprises in store we slip into a very short break on the other side we'll get to the day's biggest stories jabi there's no